out. I can speak like this? Yep. Okay. Um, July 27, 2000, we are looking at space 158 from the south towards the north and um, trying to sequence the events in um, this space, especially the west wall. So at the moment, last year, we had different interpretations. So this year we're changing it. it uh, we have at least three uh, different events that happened to the west wall. Yeah. So we have at least three uh, events in the case of the west wall. Now we know that the original west wall is made, was made of the red bricks. And it's this wall that had plaster on the inner surface and had plaster apparently on the outside surface as well. Or, unless this plaster belongs to something else, which we will think about a little later when we get deeper. So that's the original wall of the house. It's interesting that that wall was made of the bricks uh, which were of red clay, reddish, and the, the rest of the bricks in the house, at least uh, on, from on top, which we can see at the moment, uh, seem to be made of a different uh, clay, more brownish clay. Uh, more yellowish, sorry, clay, not brownish. So that that's the original wall, and so the west wall had a, a different appearance right from the beginning. Uh, these features, such as feature 171, which is this bin-like fe feature, were made on that floor. The white um, feature over here was also made of white clean, uh, or clay or plaster was made on the same on this floor and um, abutting the west wall. So what happened then is that for some reason, since the west wall probably was giving in, getting damaged, they decided to put another wall along it uh, on the outside of the building. So presumably this whole space on the outside towards the west was either totally open space or was a midden even then and they could easily cut through it and get to the wall from the outside and uh, repair it or shore it up or whatever by adding another wall which uh, was a typical occurrence in Chatelhuyuk. And it's also interesting that in the case of other walls in this building, we have double walls on all the, the other sides. We didn't have in the beginning a double wall on the western side, or we had it, but it was the wall was damaged, and at some point this west wall, later west wall, was put in, as I said, from the outside of the building. So this is the line of that wall, the outside line, and this is the inside line of the bricks of the wall, which was damaged later on. And that's why the bricks are not looking so neat and, and straight line and uh, regular shape as usual. So that was the second uh, occurrence with the west wall. And later on, for some reason, even that wall didn't hold um, completely and started collapsing and the people who lived in this house needed to add yet another yet yet another wall which was a shoring of this west wall by the shoring occurred they they were putting it on top of the original wall so either the, they, they most likely cut the original wall uh, west wall made of red bricks to some extent and on top of that, they put this shoring, which seemed to have been uh, made in a short time period and quickly uh, in order to keep the wall from uh, collapsing inwards. And that, that is why when we were removing this shoring of the west wall that was made on on the inside and on top of the original wall. That is why it looked so much as uh, rubble and large fragments of bricks mixed up, uh, including the features such as these here, which were uh, very uh, features made of, of the bricks, of very um, strong bricks, that were originally most likely on top of the west, original west wall. They were used for shoring also by being put in the place where they are and we had a whole line of it. Yeah. The reason we know that uh, the later west wall that was added from the outside uh, was um, actually... Oh no, stop. The shoring of the west wall uh, 
was exactly on top of the original west wall, which is this red bricks. And also over here, further inwards. So it wasn't a very nicely made floor. And is assumption, our um, explanation is that they did not, they stopped using this space uh, after that. They basically, uh, or they might have used it slightly, but they really mostly used it for uh, containing, shoring the west wall and containing it from c uh, collapsing further in. And they probably used the uh, Space 86 exclusively at that point. The shoring uh, went all the way to here and uh, we think that the shoring went uh, even further towards the north and we need to excavate this wall in this area to be to show how that happened but the reason we know that this is part of the shoring of the west wall is that the, these the, the the courses of the bricks here are sitting on top of the feature of the northern uh, part of this feature which looks probably this l looked the same as the southern part of it roundish and bin like recipient like feature. So these were put in later on and on top of the feature the same way that the shoring was occurred on the rest of this in this space and was put on top of this entire feature. We the, um, I have to make a note that the shoring was not as um, strong as uh, everywhere. Like for instance in this area we were able to cut through it much more easily than in the rest, in the southern area where the shoring was the strongest, they were using the harder materials over there for some reason. Or also the way we know and we are sure that the west, later west wall, so not original, we have original, we have later west wall and then we have the shoring on the wall. So the later west wall uh, collapsed and started moving in. We know that by not just uh, because it's sitting on top to some extent in this area, it's sitting on top of the original wall. The bricks were. Uh, but also because this feature was totally damaged by its movement. Uh, all of these, this is deformed and we ha did have a lot of more of the formation of the edge of this feature. So this uh, west wall moved in and then they put the shoring on top. They sacrificed the whole area of course and all the features in order to contain the west wall from collapsing totally. So they put the shor shoring on top. And that, okay, so the, the um, later, we think that even in this part of the west wall, uh, this was a later addition. Origin last year we didn't think so. We thought that this was uh, part of the very original west wall, but now we know it's not uh, because we can see that it is sitting on top of this feature, so it was added later to the building, even though in plan these bricks seem to be very uh, stable in here and they, they look like a proper wall. And not just that, but uh, the face of this wall was plastered, which is something that did not take place in the rest of uh, the West Wall after it was uh, rebuilt, basically, in the later stage. But here they, for some reason, they did, uh, they thought that it was important to plaster these walls. And here we think they continued using this space, actually, after the collapse of the house and they used it as a storage or bin space and we have remains uh, of the bottoms we believe of the bottoms of the bins here or some cash like features so out of all of the uh, 158 space this probably was the only one that was used in the very late stage of the building uh, when 86 space was still being inhabited Shoring up, uh, the shoring, sorry, of uh, the west wall wasn't the only shoring that happened uh, in this space. At the same time, most likely, they needed to shore also the screen wall, which was m must have been uh, affected uh, with with movement and and giving in of the the west wall. So they did the shoring by using exactly the same type of material that we. Uh, have seen in the case of the shoring of the west wall, which is 
large fragments of plaster, uh, gray uh, bricks made of very um, hard gray material, a lot of rubble, mixed up material was put here in some form as though even in some cases using the bricks, we have elements of bricks here, we have elements of bricks here and mortars in between. So they used all that to pile up on top of what originally was the basically the brick of the of the pillar of this feature originally we had the bricks mortar brick mortar brick that ended up with this roundish top uh, in this case but once this whole collapse occurred they needed to reinforce this as well the screen wall the pillars that were holding the screen wall they did it by adding these bricks and the shoring and they probably extended extended the, the this screen wall uh, made it higher up we see the same situation but in a less at the moment less preserved state in the case of the sudden pillar of the screen wall where we can see okay so in the case of the sudden the pillar on the south end of the screen wall. We also had uh, courses of brick originally and mortar, which later on, which m were much narrower. I mean, the whole uh, pillar was narrower in the beginning, but later on when it was shored, uh, bricks were uh, and rubble was added to this side of it. And also some of it was on top, but we excavated it last year. Uh, so it's not so obvious as it is in the case of the northern pillar. I think I've done the stone sheet and I just want to take points with the treasure. Oh, to take points. Okay, I'll go ahead. Yeah. Hang on. What are you thinking as you dig? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're thinking about whether the head is going to be up here or down here, and if it's going to slope down. We're going to hit the skull first, or the shoulder, or the pelvis. The typical things that get hit first, or encountered first, not hit. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't sound right. <laughs> All right, you hear that. Those, those, those are the Encountered. Yeah, there's a, a, a slight soil change, but it's still pressed in. And we're thinking about whether it's not one individual, as it looks like a, a regular grave, like a one individual, but that it might change and there might be more than one. So, what we do is children rather than one long adult. What do you think, Bashak? Well, we discussed this, but um, as it looks, in my opinion, it's about person, because the uh, end of the cut is quite clear. But we might find more individuals underneath this plot. Mm -hmm. So we'll see later as we dig down. Like underneath where you're sitting? Maybe. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay, but, yeah. So here we are in the kitchen area. Uh, this is platform one six nine. Um, looking very beautiful. Now it's pretty low down and you probably won't touch it for a bit. Here's the white bench that separates the kitchen area from the other. That's the bulk that's cleaning. This is the kitchen area. This is the central part. This is the fire installation next to the platform. 
This bench is a contemporary with the upper level of the 1969 platform. Um, we can see how it joins the outer side, outer part there. That's the old edge of platform 169. Mm. Uh, this is the newly cleaned area of platform here of the kitchen arbor to the west of uh, 167. Another edge just down here. Coming all the way up to platform 170 that I'm standing on. Okay, we're on. We're on. Um, July 27th, we are in the kitchen of the Building 3. This is the southern part of the house and previously the midden area and the scapularium and now we are under all of that and on the floors of the house. So, <laughs> Snip. <laughs> So, what we are looking at is a clear division between the kitchen area and the central area of the house. And the clear division is indicated by this white step made of plaster that runs east-west uh, across the, most of the building and then ends up into the wall of the, of the platform feature 17T. And, um, so that's that division. In the kitchen area, obviously, it's a so-called dirty floors and uh, a lot of remains of burning and uh, probably food making and things like that. So what we have, the, the top levels, floor levels in the kitchen and in the platform that was part of the kitchen have been removed last year. So what we see now is the levels immediately below the top levels, level, floor levels. So what we had in this central part, for instance, last year, and we have removed is uh, thick deposits of uh, uh, black uh, organic materials, mix mixture of ash and charcoal and soil and l with bits of burning and so forth. Under that, uh, the latest features that we see in the kitchen are this fire installation, whose feature number I don't know at the moment, but this is a fire inst installation with the little holes that go around it. So the central hearth area was here in this uh, circular area and around it we had a series of little holes which we explain for now as the holes that remain from the construction of wattle and dope type of construction uh, on top of the heart. So as far as we know and can tell from the record, at the time when this fire installation in the central kitchen area was in use, the platform 169 was uh, having a white floor, floors that looked very much like this but were on top, which were the top layers of the floors were covering these hearts that we see now, but they actually belong to uh, the lower horizons or the earlier periods in this house, and they are not contemporary with the uh, fire installation in the center. Okay, so here uh, the latest floor, as I said, on top of this uh, flat platform feature 169 uh, was starting from here, from this line and going up vertically and then on top of the platform. And that is connected and we can see here the connection point with this white step 
and we presumably the white floors that go run underneath this feature which we will expose later so there was that nice white base on which uh, these features were built and the same happened on top of this platform uh, the outside edge of the platform, uh, Feature 6.9, run like that, and we can see the outside um, plaster line and run all the way into the wall. Now you have so the central kitchen floor uh, this, that was set on top of this white base, plastered base, is set in basically in between this platform, feature 169, and the other platform, feature 167. And it's, uh, is, it is in a uh, slightly deeper area. It has roundish corners. We can see this gray uh, f kitchen floor here going round and all the way into the wall. And the same on the other side. It goes round this corner. In in the area next to uh, the platform feature 167, we believe we had the traces of the ladder which were used to uh, get in and out of the house. And that would just correspond to the other example uh, examples in other houses where we had those in on top of the fireplaces above the fireplaces and here we have the same the floors obviously in the kitchen are in a desperate state they are uh, many many times replastered and not just that but they're made up and replastered in a small areas depending on the the uh, how often they were used and how much they were used and worn out and the areas that were more heavily used and worn out had to be replaced more times and so forth they would not replace apparently the entire floor in the kitchen but certain areas that needed more repair would be repaired more often and especially the area where the ladder was because presumably this was the area where the water was running in and uh, was heavily also used for walking and when you add to it uh, the firing in those areas um, that also added to uh, um, damage of the floors now going towards the east uh, the kitchen space gets little cleaner little cleaner and the floors are whiter and we do have a feature the outline of a feature running from the platform 167 uh, down towards the white step and then over here is the other end of it and this is the edge of the platform so it was really abutting the platform and it seems as though this was some sort of a little basin floor so cut in in the same way that the other edges all the corners all four corners of this kitchen floor were sort of uh, cut in to the soil under them and um, like in a little basin and uh, that floor is slightly cleaner than the rest of the kitchen. Also, the floor in this half of the kitchen is deeper than in the central part of the kitchen. Uh, we, we've gone to uh, an earlier horizon in here than in the central part. So once we remove uh, the fire installation in the central part, we'll be on the same horizon as in the area towards the east and therefore then we'll compare the two okay i'm just doing a picture here of the convergence of uh, feature 173 on the left and 170 on the east and um, what i want to show here is that there's uh, what we're seeing here, 173, is actually the extension to the south of this platform, which is later than the earliest levels, floor levels of 170 on the right. The question is, which ones do we take off first? Okay, you can see here, we already photographed this in the profile on the... Um, the floor of 170, which actually underlies, Let's see if I can take the string off. Okay, um, we can see the um, here the original line of the southern extension of feature 
173 and then it was as they joined it with these later these uh, floors of 170 they made a layer a finishing layer across both platforms so they'd have a smooth layer all around uh, the house all around this room here and what we're looking at here are several sloping floors of 170 on the left the f late uh, earliest then the next then a packing of a third and a, a third floor up there and so on this latest floor on the right from 170 probably a butts and seems to meld nicely into our late floor on the top of 173. You can see the line of 173 there nicely. And this here is the line of the um, fourth floor. I don't, the bad view. Today in the northeast corner, I was actually, um, I didn't look at the burial yet, but I was actually looking at this area to the east of the burial and um, looking at an enormous amount of disturbance around. I, it's got all messed up now, but um, that will be good to re um, to re clean and draw, I think, because I think there's some interesting patterns there. We can put it on to um, drawing number 15. So here in the burial, um, Bashak and Laurie have been going great guns, getting deeper and deeper through the fill and at this west, the northern end of the burial uh, they found a remains of a wooden, of a charcoal carbonized plank which was um, taken for sampling and they've now just arriving on the layer of bones. Very nicely. They also found in this midden stuff, they found um, some material, um, one of those little bone ring um, preparation pieces and a big clay ball, a couple of big clay balls. So they're just at the top of the human bone, the burial itself. At the convergence of features 173 with its southward extension and 170, I cleaned this up um, and in fact videoed it and drew it, I photoed it, uh, preparatory to actually taking off floors from 170, feature 170. And in fact, we started that, Michael and um, Tonya started taking off a floor, and that was good because this floor, now we've made a little gap through the bulk here, and it converges entirely with this, one of the middle floors of um, 170. That is, these are its upper floors before, um, after it had been short, uh, made smaller by the expansion of 173. Here in the northeast, uh, sorry, southeast corner, Anna's been plugging away at this mess here in the eastern part of the kitchen and found um, some kind of a space, some kind of a room here really nicely um, joining up. We made video of this. In fact, we made a video of the whole of this um, southern part of, of Space 86, the, ki the so-called kitchen area, and had a discussion about that. Vuk and um, Heidi cleaned uh, Space 606, that is the central well floor area, and um, preparatory to cleaning. And again, we see these huge pits or um, cuts in the middle or against the screen wall and as I'm looking at them I'm wondering are these in fact burials and Mira has, is intrigued by that possibility as well. Bashak thinks it's entirely possible although she doesn't rem they did have such um, huge numbers of burials in the floor um, in building one so we may have the same kind of thing here, we'll see. Uh, Space 158, we made um, a video of the entire um, of this the entire space today, long video discussion, and um, we're, we've also started taking um, started drawing this whole area 
against the wall, the plan of it today. Just a, just a quick word about um, 169. We videoed it and also it was drawn today uh, with this um, lower floor. And in fact, we've, we are below the kitchen area um, in this, in this uh, platform. And so we'll probably wait until we've cleaned the kitchen area of the southern part of 606 before we go any deeper with this platform.